What is going on everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone and this is your weekly gear news update. We do this every Wednesday bringing you the latest stuff in guitar gear news. Uh, I got some other cool things to tell you at the end of this video. If you like guitar stuff, period, that's what this channel does. Do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, let me tell you about some stuff. So typically we do this in a certain order. Usually we do pedals and stuff, and then amps, and then we save guitars for last. This week, we are flipping it on its head because I've got some very interesting things to tell you about some pedals that I think you are gonna dig. So, without, or with, delay, uh, let's get into uh, the guitar stuff. Gibson has just unveiled the J180 Collector's Edition Acoustic, and this is uh, Cat Stevens signature, Yousef uh, signature, which is pretty cool. You know, last week, I think it was last week, uh, we announced the Everly Brothers guitar. So this week it's Cat Stevens. Uh, this is modeled after the guitar that he used to play like Wild World and all those really awesome Cat Stevens songs that, you know, once you get them stuck in your head, they don't go away all day. And now you have to go listen to some different stuff. You know, ooh baby, it's a wild world. See, now it's gonna be stuck in your head all day. Anyway, so this is a 24 and 7.5 scale uh, J180. It's got a solid spruce top. Here's the interesting, Sitka spruce top. Here's the interesting thing. They aged this top, that thermal aging thing that a lot of companies are doing because they wanted it to feel and sound old. So they did that. It's got a solid maple back and sides. Uh, I don't believe any tortoises were harmed in the development of this humongous tortoise shell pick guard. It's, I'm sure it's synthetic. It has to be. And uh, it's a pretty cool guitar. It's got an LR Bags sound hole uh, pickup in it. And it also has that adjustable pin bridge, pinless adjustable bridge that those old Gibsons had. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool guitar. Uh, let me see how many they are making and how much they are. They're making 50 of them and they're $74.99. So at least they're not 10 grand. So if you're really into this thing and you're fast, you might get one. The Neural Quad Cortex is probably kind of the new hotness in big time high-end professional modelers. I think they're about 1800 bucks. Uh, it's Supposed to be amazing. I've not gotten to play one yet. I really want to try one. It's got a new software update called 1.40, and it's got 10, let's see, nine new amplifiers, 10 new effects, and a bunch of other little tweaks. So I got my computer in front of me because I can never remember all of this stuff. Uh, there are some Bogners, there are some US HP Twin Bright, Bright Jumped, Normal, and Normal Jumped. There's a high power tweed, uh, twin F, uh, 5F8A, um, some other stuff. We've got pedals. We've got the Nobles, ODR1, which is pretty classic dude. We've got the Keeley Red Dirt, um, some dual delays, and then Boss uh, CS3 kind of stuff, Universal 1176, um, Phaser, a whole bunch of other stuff. So there's... You should read about this thing. Uh, the Neural DSP is, um, Quad Cortex is a pretty cool unit. Uh, it's different than any of the other stuff. It's different than the Helix. It's different than the Kemper. Um, I really want to try one of these. Anyway, this software update, everybody says like this is the one that sort of made it more awesome than everything else. Again, I haven't experienced it for myself, but I've watched some videos on it and I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So, it's not an amp, but this is in the amp section because this is what amps are in 2022. Pigtronics, now we get into the pedal side, which is, like I said, this is a little bit backwards, but I think it's gonna be worth it. The pedal side of our news this morning, Pigtronics has a super jumbo fuzz called the Star Eater. It's got a filter in it, a boosted filter. So if you see the contour knob, I think on this side as it's in that picture, um, you push that button and it gives you a boosted filter that is adjustable with the sweep knob above it and the little rocker switch. The idea behind this pedal is to give you eh, kind of that 
80s, early 90s-ish fuzz that was used. Smashing Pumpkins gets alluded to in some of the videos uh, that I've seen about this particular pedal. Uh, it also has germanium and silicone, and the level is controlled by a hunger knob, which I find pretty cool. And the look is pretty cool too. Super 80s, vintage -y sort of video gamey looking kind of thing. Uh, maybe a little bit Miami Vice in there as well. Pretty cool pedal, and I like those big rocker switches. Pretty awesome. The other thing I like about this too is, I think that cable, well, I know that cable, because I texted Austin this morning and asked him, uh, that cable right there is a runway audio cable, conveniently blurred out in the picture of the Pigtronics ad. Uh, if you want the best cables in the world, runway audio, there is a link to him in the description. If you use Dylan Talks Tone in the little discount code area, you get 10% off of a runway audio cable. There will also be links to as many of these things as I can find in the news today in the description. If you use those links, it does help us out just a little bit. I do appreciate it when you do. Uh, yeah, let me tell you about some other cool pedals. Strymon has made some pretty top end effects pedals for a long time, really specializing in time-based effects. So delays, um, reverbs, tremolo, that kind of stuff. Now they have, um, they, and they've always been top high-end stuff, but they went through a completely sweeping upgrade of all of all six of these kind of main pedals that they talk about. So the Dig, the Flint, the El Capistan, the Deco, the Lex, the Blue Sky. They all have a JFET input circuit. This is to give all of the tone related stuff a little bit more versatility. Uh, apparently they say they just sound better with a JFET input circuit. A new ARM processor, which is more powerful than uh, probably the Shark that they were using before. And so again, this is just gonna give it more, it's gonna be able to do more um, and cleaner apparently, uh, according to what they've said in their press releases, full stereo input and outputs and USB connections so that you can hook them up for firmware updates um, and that sort of stuff, USB-C, so all, all the way up to 2022. Anyway, uh, so this is a full-on upgrade. Not only that, a couple of these pedals get some more controls. So for example, the Blue Sky, which is a reverb, gets a shimmer, like a dedicated shimmer knob and some other presets having to do with that knob. Before, you had to basically shape the reverb to do the shimmer thing. Now it's got a dedicated control. And there are a couple of other of these pedals that actually got new dedicated controls for a couple of the different parameters that these pedals are kind of known for. Apparently this entire sweeping upgrade set of features was basically requested by players. They're like, look man, we want Shimmer on our blue sky, can you just put a knob on there? USB-C makes sense because it's 2022. And of course, in order to do all this stuff, probably had to upgrade the processors because that just seems to happen with all this stuff these days. Anyway, this stuff is gonna be pretty awesome. It always has been awesome. It just got more awesome. The headliner for me today was the Wampler Metaverse. This is a delay. And we just talked about a bunch of delays, but this delay is pretty cool. I believe it's 11 different sounds. So basically, I watched a video on this this morning, it's really long, but it was really cool because it was Brian Wampler talking about all the stuff about this pedal. And it really dove into it because I'm really interested in this. Basically, uh, he took 11 of his favorite delays that he uses a lot. So think, um, the way huge delay, think a couple of the actual Wampler delays, three of them I think, um, and a, a boss delay, some tape echoes, a whole bunch of stuff, 11 of them that he put in this box. Uh, some of the delays that are his, that are actually Wampler delays, are the, his actual delays, he just stuffed them in here with the other ones. Um, there's a couple of really cool features about this pedal though that I think kind of set it apart. First of all, it's little, it's a double, just a double space, like a normal, you see it here in the picture, it's just a double space. So it's not huge uh, like some of the other ones. So it won't take up much space. It has an expression pedal out, which or in, however you wanna look at that, which is very cool, that you can actually hold down some buttons 
and you can use that expression pedal for basically any of the parameters that control the delay on the pedal or all of them. So you can tweak some knobs, you can set the start of it, you know, the, the toe up, and then you can tweak some knobs and then set the toe down and then be able to control all of those things at once or maybe just one of those things at once. It has presets so you can set those as presets. Uh, the tone control on this thing doesn't work just as a normal tone control. Each of the algorithms on all of the delays, the tone control affects the delay a little bit different based on the algorithm. A lot of new digital pedals are doing this and I think it's very cool because it makes it more versatile. So it's not a global tone control, it actually works differently with each of the delays. The other thing I think is very cool is that there are some features where you can hold down the bypass button and then select some other uh, parameters per delay. So, for example, you can set the flange on the mod setting. You can set um, tone control. You can set a, a bunch of other things. It just depends on which delay you're using at the time. So you're gonna have to read the owner's manual on this thing, but actually when it really, I'm probably making it sound more complicated than it is. It seems very, very simple to use and I really, really dig it. The other thing I really like about it is on some of the delays, you can actually hold down a button and set a boost for that delay and then set that as a preset. So when you use that particular delay, it boosts up, which is really, really cool. So there's a bunch of really neat usable things. You can tell that when Brian Wampler designed this, he was designing it from a, I'm playing guitar, what things do I like, what would I actually use kind of concept and not just packing a bunch of crap into a pedal, which I think is very, very cool. Uh, anyway, this was to me, of everything I saw this week, my favorite, favorite thing. I'll leave a link to it in the description um, below so you can check it out. Uh, it'll probably be at Sweetwater. I haven't looked yet, uh, but definitely check it out. I think this is, to me, the pedal of the week, in my opinion. Make sure you also check out the special run DAF that we are doing right now, you can see a picture of it right here. I'll leave a link to it at Dylan Talks Tone in the description below as well. We are only gonna leave the ordering window for this particular cool looking humbucker uh, till the end of the month. This is our basically vintage PAF style pickup, very low output, El Nico 5, sounds freaking fantastic. And we wanted to put in a little bit cooler cover for this month's special run pickup. We're trying to do one of these special runs every couple months or so. Uh, just doing something a little different. Gives me a little creative outlet instead of just sticking a normal humbucker cover on it, which is kind of fun. So anyway, check it out. I believe the ordering window is going to be done. Whew, maybe tomorrow or the next day. So make sure you order that before they're gone. Thanks for hanging out. This has been Dylan Tox Tone gear news update. We do it every Wednesday. We do a live stream Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern and it's Q&A. So it's really fun. We have a deal on Patreon where you can go, all Patreon members and YouTube members, the little join button down there. Uh, you ask a question ahead of time and then we feature it on the screen. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can just come and hang out live with us and uh, just try to get a comment in. Uh, although it's been pretty busy lately, so it's been kind of fun. And we've got a techie kind of cool video coming out on Monday that I think you're really going to like. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you tomorrow on our live stream.